play with this infant before I knew it, I had 14 chapters. Uh, but then it kind of stopped. Uh, in the spring, I had a lot of, uh, I hadn't gone uh, to a convention, I had a lot of home repair stuff. I'm not very gone because home repair does that. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's been involved in it knows. Mm -hmm. It always takes twice as long and it costs twice as much. Um, and then the prayer burn of course started early because the ER came out on uh, August 2nd, and so it's like, book launch that this month has been stretched to three or four. So I will get back to this in the when it all comes, comes down again. Uh, on my computer, the working title is I've been his book. Stickers out there who want to write Ivan stories, get them in now. Now all the arguing, that wasn't the books that I wanted. How can I reviews anymore of people telling me that what book they wanted me to write instead of the one that I wrote? It's like kind of cool when you're really engaged with it and they care, and that's good. But don't have problems. <laughs> And anyway, we would just start with chapter one and go until uh, you hook me on stage or we have it. Ivan's door buzzer sounded at close to Kamara at midnight, just when he was unwinding enough from lingering jet lag and screwed up diurnal rhythm from the day's labors and could just speak. He growled under his breath and prod unwillingly to answer it. Instincts proved correct when he saw him waiting in the aperture. Oh God, I already borrowed. Go away. All right, then, said Byron, smoothly, ignoring Ivan's anti greeting May I come in? Ivan took about a second to consider the, at best, complicated possibilities Byron usually trailed in his way. I said simply, no. He <laughs> hesitated too long. Byron slipped inside. Ivan sighed, letting the door slide close and seal. So far from home, it was good to see a familiar face. Just not eyes. <laughs> the next time is a security screen and pretend not to be here, eh? Byron padded swiftly across the small but choice living quarters of Ivan's downtown Tulsa's luxury flat, rental by the week. Ivan had picked it out for its potential proximity to Tulsa's nightlife, which, alas, he had so far not had a chance to sample. Pausing at the broad glass doors to the balcony, Byron dimmed the polarization on the seductive view of the glittering lights of the capital city. Dome, I've been corrected his thought to Kamara nomenclature, as the apology existed under a hodgepodge of seals to keep toxic planetary atmosphere out and the breathable one in. Byerly pulled the drapes as well and turned back to the room. Yielding to a curiosity he knew he would regret, I've been asked, What the hell are you doing on Kamara, Bye. Isn't this off your usual beat? Byerly grimaced, working. Indeed, an experienced observer, which Ivan unfortunately was, could detect a distinct strain around Bai's eyes, along with the redness from drink and perhaps red recreational chemicals. Byerly cultivated the authentic look of a barrier and high war town clown, given over to a life of dissolution and idle vice by actually living it 90% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> the other 10%, and most of his hidden income, came from his work as an informer for Imperial Security. <laughs> And 90% of that was just more dissolution and vice, because of the having to in reports at the end. The best thing I then had to concede to get dicey. Wrapping out your friends to inset for money, I then had one second buy, to which buy had shrugged and replied, and the greater glory of the Imperium, don't forget that. I then wondered which it was tonight. In reflexive response to the manners drilled into him in his youth, I then offered something to drink, beer, wine, something stronger. Contemplated by a boneless flop on the living room couch. Coffee? Just water. <coughs> clear my head and I need to sleep. I went. I went to his tidy kitchenette and filled a tumbler. As he handed it to his unwelcome guest, I said, And what are you doing on so skin solstice, Ivan? Working. I open hand invited him to stand. Ivan sat across from him and said, Trailing my boss, who was here for an ox conference with his assorted counterparts and underlings, efficiently combined with the annual Kamara speaking section, all the excitement of a tax inventory, such in dress uniform. Immediately, <laughs> I didn't realize Bai had to already know all this. He found I didn't have to, because Bai's random social calls weren't. Still working for Admiral Display? Yep. Aide de camp, secretary, personal assistant, a large body, whatever he needs. I aim to make myself indispensable. 
And still nothing in promotion, are you, Captain Borpetto? Yes. In succeeding, no thanks to you. Why, sir? They say that at Imperial Service Headquarters, the captain's bringing coffee. That's right. And I like it that way. I don't only wish it were true. It seemed barely months ago, no, it was over a year, that the latest flare up of tensions with Barrier's most traditional enemy, the Seed Again and Empire, had sent Ivan to military headquarters 26.7 hours of Barrier a day for weeks on end, sweating out all the most horrific possibilities. In detail, war had been averted through non traditional diplomacy, mostly on the part of Barrier and Emperor Gregor's weaselly imperial auditor and to give credit where it was his wife. <laughs> that time, it was always the next time. I had not studied Byerly, who was a few years younger than himself. They shared the same brown eyes, dark hair, and olive skin common to Barrier's somewhat inbred military case, or aristocracy, whatever one wanted to call it, and indeed common to most Barrier. I was shorter, slighter than I was, six foot one, broad shouldered thickness, but then he didn't have a displays riding him to keep up the recruiting poster appearance expected of an officer serving in imperial headquarters. Whereas it, when they were squinting from the dissolution, by eyes had the startling beauty that distinguished his famous or infamous clan, to which Ivan was connected by a few twigs in his own family tree. That was the problem of being poor. You ended up related to all sorts of people you'd rather not be, and they all felt free to call on you for favors. <laughs> so what do you want, Firely? So direct. I've never become a diplomat that way either. I once spent a year as assistant military attaché to Barrier and Embassy on Earth. It was as much diplomacy as I cared for. Get to the point, I want to get to bed. If I wish to do so, you. I let his eyes wide. Why, I know that invitation. It's a true one. I can say yes to that old line just to watch you have a coronary. He <laughs> <laughs> put his hand over his heart and intoned briskly, and so I might. Drained his water and gave over the vamping. The face so often arranged in the vague sparminess, firming intently in a way that I've been always found to touch disturbing. Actually, I have a little task to ask of you. So I presumed. Well, it's quite in your line. I mean, you said to be good, doing you a good turn. Who knows? I'd like you to pick up a girl. No, said I. It's only in part to see what I will say next. Come, come, I pick up girls all the time. How about your recommendation? Firely <laughs> made a face. So suspicious, I mean. Yeah. Firely shrugged, conceding the point. Unfortunately, I'm not entirely sure. And my duties with, if I may say it, to be unusually unpleasant people I am presently accompanying, spying on, I translated this without difficulty. And the company by kept was usually unpleasant, in Ivan's opinion. Unusually unpleasant implied what? Leave me little opportunity to check her out. But they have an inexplicable interest in her, which I suspect is not friendly. Worries me, Ivan, I must say. Yes, after a moment. She's quite well looking, I assure you. You need have no fear on that score. Ivan frowned, stunned. Are you implying I'd refuse to supply assistance to a homely girl? Firely sat back, eyebrows looking up. To your credit, I actually don't believe that's the case. But it will add a certain convincing verisimilitude to the outside observer. <laughs> a small black plastic flimsy containing a colored flat scan from his jacket and handed it across. The background was too fuzz to make out. The picture showed a striking young woman striding down the sidewalk. Apparent age could be anything between 20 and 30 standard years, though that was no certain clue as to real age. Tumbling black hair, bright eyes, skin glowing an interesting cinnamon brown against a green tank top. Decided nose, determined chin. Even the natural face she was born with was the work of a real artist, because it certainly didn't bear the stamp from the same mold blandness of the usual body sculpture, a biological ideal that lost its appeal in the position. Long legs in tan trousers that hung in all the right places. It's a nicely full figure. Nicely full. If the face was natural, my other common features need to. <laughs> with a weakening reluctance, I even said, Who is she? Supposedly, a Khmeran citizen named Nanja Brindis lately moved to Solstice from Obia Dom. Supposedly? Well, I have reason to suspect that might be a recent cover identity. She did move here about two months ago without the scene. So, who is she really? It'd be a fine thing if you can find that out. <laughs> if she's hiding her identity for a good reason, she's hardly going to tell me. I've been to think, is it a good reason? Well, it's 
suspect it's a very good reason, and I also suspect she's not a professional to get into the world. It's all pretty vague, Barclay. Yeah, I remind me, my security clearance is higher than yours. And probably higher than points in doubt. <laughs> then there is that pesky need to know you. I am not sticking my head into one of your dodging grandeurs again, unless I know as much as you know. At least. <laughs> Byerly flung up his well manicured hands in some surrender. The people on who had seemed to have gotten themselves involved in a complex smuggling operation rather over their heads. Our local space is a major trade net. This is lousy with smugglers. As long as the transients don't try to offset their goods within the Imperium, in which case the Imperial Customs deal sharply with them, they get ignored. And the Kamari trade leads at least their own. That's two out of three. He said he must be. The only thing left is the Imperial fleet. Just so. I really if there was even a hint of that sort of thing going on, service security would swoop in. Damn hard. Mm, but even service security needs to know where I'm going to swoop. I'm doing this for a preliminary pre swoop survey. They involve accusations of poor science and arrogance and powerful relevance. But because they took off the real crib, so they promptly escape one of the two. No, I didn't have to see that. Mm-hmm. And once military personnel get involved with them, they think simple civilian crime, they become vulnerable to more serious blackmail. Five very different. I'm so pleased to talk. One of your saving graces has had practice. The Splendid should know about it. The Splendid will know about it. In the meanwhile, try to remember you don't know. That costume is cancelled, of course, should my dead body turn up in a really compromising condition in some ditch outside the dome in the next few days. <laughs> they get high. The stakes are very high, and not just the money. So, how's this girl connected? Yes. I was saying, she's not with my crew. She's definitely not with the non barriers they're dealing with, though it's not outside the realm of reason that she could be a protector. And she's not what she pretends to be. What's left? I'm forced to find out because I'm not coming there again, and I'm not going to have time in the next few days for side issues. I just said slowly, do you think she's in danger of her life? And why else would I bother to set even a side frame on this side issue? I didn't get this living to charity. He did make this living to a weird sort of loyalty. And somewhere under the persiflage, camouflage, and just blank flage, I wore up the hive. Let's just say you would gratify me by staying alert. I should not care to explain any accidents that might befall you to your lady mother. <laughs> I didn't allow the concern to be <laughs> So where am I to find this so-called girl? I'm very certain she's a real girl, I guess. <laughs> With you, one never knows. <laughs> I spied dryly. I had the grace to squirm just a bit and acknowledge him to discuss the dono ni donna of lamented memory. <laughs> <laughs> Cousin Jodo Baratia was all too vivid presence of the more martial tenant who was seen there. If I dodged the diversion and, so to speak, soldiered on, though the idea of I and any branch of the service made Ivan new to the next nation, <laughs> she works as a packing clerk at a place called Swift Shipping. Here's her home address, too. This was unlisted, by the way, so unless you can devise a convincing reason for turning up there, probably better to run into her something to her out of work. I don't gather she does much farming. Big friends, Ivan. Before tomorrow night, by present. He's pressing his hands to his eyes. Actually, far tomorrow night without fail. I've been accepted the contact data with misgivings. Eyes stretched, rose a bit frequently to his feet, and made his way to the door. Adieu, dear friend, adieu. Sweet dreams, and the angels are your repose. Also, the angels with the cross of dark curls, sunset skin, and bosoms like sunny pillows. Dry up. <laughs> I stood over his shoulder, waved without turning around, and he laughed. I then returned to his couch, sat with a thumb, and kicked up the flimsy, studying it cautiously. At least I was right about the heavenly colors. What else would he write about? <laughs> I then had an unsettling premonition that he was going to find out. 